Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be working on my wife's 2011 Suburban. For the last oh, five months or so, the oil pressure gauge has been on zero because the sensor went bad. And now that it's winter time, she'd like to use a remote start and that won't work without the ECU getting a oil pressure signal from the sensor. So it's, I guess it's time to fix it. Probably fix that running light that's out too. Maybe change the oil. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. So let's get to it. All right, let's take a look at the uh, parts and tools we're going to need to complete this project. Ordered these off of Amazon. I'll post a link uh, in the description below. So this is the socket. That's a must-have. It's wide open in there, so it slips right over the right over the connector. Let's see, this is the oil pressure sensor sending unit. Already comes with some sealant on the threads and the socket just slips right over it. This is the screen that goes down inside the block and your sensor sits on this, keeps all the sludge and stuff out of the motor. So let's get started. So here's under the hood. The oil pressure sending unit is located on the back of the block. Way down in there and it's super tight fit. So that's where that socket's gonna come in handy. To get started, we're gonna have to get these hard plastic lines out of the way. And to do that, you just push that button down and give it a pull. And then the same for the one in the back. And kind of a pain in the butt to get your hand back in there. Push that button and give it a good pull up and it should pop loose. Get that out of the way it'll give you a little more room to get your hand in back there so we don't have to do anything crazy like pull the fuel rails and or the fuel lines and intake and then this guy right here and we'll just bend that out of the way so it stays down over here i just tucked this hose up underneath there give me a little more room and get your hand right back in there and get to the sensor. All right, I fought the sensor clip forever. There's a little safety clip that goes over the clip itself. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, ended up breaking it because it was stuck in on one side. But once you get that up, little rectangle part, once you get that slid up, you just push this button right here, push it in, and then the connector slides right off. And I don't know if you can see down and through this hole where my finger's at. That's actually where the sensor's at. So we need to get that socket with a wobbly and an extension down in there and get that broke loose. All right, here's the tools you're gonna need. A flex head, three eighths ratchet, and an extension with a wobbly on it. I like to throw a little bit of electrical tape on the joint there of the wobbly so it'll help it hold its position so it's not flopping around everywhere when you're trying to get it down into places or all right so what we'll do is we'll take the socket and get it on the sensor itself and it's pretty tight fit back there this little plastic guy it's actually kind of holding the socket out just a little bit so it's hard to get on there but once you get to get the socket somewhat started on the sensor, it pops right down in there. We'll come in and get the extension wobbly on there. nothing really easy about working in these tight spots but there we go got that on get my light to stay and pop the sensor loose get your ratchet off 
now and turn it loose. All right, probably a little hard to see here, but if you use two hands when you're taking that sensor out with the socket still on it and bend this plastic piece back just a little bit, it gets it so it's not rubbing on the socket and makes it easier to take out. And got the sensor out. The next step is to get this out of the block, take a bolt, that basically just threads right in there and then that'll allow you to pull it out. So I'll reach in there, find the hole, drop the bolt down and screw it in. And it comes out pretty easy. So, there's the screen. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. I was expecting it to be a lot more gunked up than that. So, I guess that's a good sign that the motor's pretty clean on the inside. All right, now it's time to put it back together. Reach back in there, find the hole, drop the screen down in there, making sure you put it in the right way. Right. Take the sensor. And get it started by hand. Get it down as far as possible. All right, got the socket. I'll probably need two hands to get it on the sensor. Oh, there it goes, dropped on, perfect. All right, well, who'd have thought that was the hardest part is get the damn extension back on. Well, it looks like I'm cranking it a lot, but if you look down there at the socket, it's only going about an eighth of a rotation because of all the slop with the wobbly. Come on, you. Got some 
the socket. Find the connector. And just figure out which way you got to spin the connector to get it to click on. It's always fun working in these tight spots. Click means it's good to go. All right, now got the sensor in, got a plug back in, so we can start putting our lines back on, getting this thing buttoned up. Got all those guys buttoned back up. Let's grab the engine cover. Line up the dowels, pop it in place. All right guys, got the project all wrapped up. All in all, pretty simple. Just a little bit of a pain in the butt trying to get your hand between the intake and the firewall. I think it took me about, oh, roughly 35 minutes or so with holding the camera and trying to do it one-handed. And just right about $35 in parts in the socket, so. Definitely doable, definitely something you can do at home. You don't need to pull half the motor apart to get to it. You just gotta get your hand in a tight spot. So, as always, like and subscribe, tell a friend, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.